This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the Dixville. Dixville. The Drippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hitler. All gathered in secrecy and flying high as a country. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Get ready, we'll drink it. Toast going up. The shot of the day is on the way, and the head chef is in the house. Ted's meat and potatoes. Eight mistakes you are making while grilling burgers. That is all coming up. In the meantime, the game is Big Dummy, 844-999. Ola, who is our next contestant ready to play the big game? Hello, Austin. Welcome to the men's room. Big <laughs> Dummy! Uh, uh, uh. Austin, sober, not sober. Sober, my friend. Welcome to the show, bro. Austin, uh, men's room poll. One hour locked in a room full of. You want snakes? Chimpanzee. All right, chimpanzee. <laughs> you are. I'll, I'll, choke, I'll choke a chimpanzee out. No problem. Man, you are insane. <laughs> I will choke <laughs> a chimpanzee out. No problem. He's going to rip off your penis, bite off your face, and then eat your liver. Mm-hmm. And your brain. Oh, uh, and I might just be adding this part. Maybe I heard this somewhere. Then have sex with your corpse. Little known fact about chimpanzees. Damn. Yeah. Well, they take it deep. Ted. They are hardcore. Hardcore. They take it deep. <laughs> All right. Here's your question. What video game is the most profitable piece of media history? This go again. Movies, television show, any syndication deal you've had, anything. What video game is the most profitable piece in media history? Most profitable piece uh, in media, media right? It's, it beats Star Wars, Gone with the Wind, any of the anything you can think of. This, if it's from the media, this video game is the most profitable. Uh, like any video game, or just like based with the movie? Uh, no, a video game. Oh, Grand Theft Auto. What was it? Grand Theft oh. Auto. Okay. Yeah, really? really? Believe it or not. All right. So the game has sold more than 90 million units since it came out. It's generated around $6 billion. Keep in mind, Star Wars and Gone with the Wind, including all of the DVDs, the re-releases, all the stuff, they made about $3 billion. Like It doubles that. It and might be better than Gone with the Wind. Everything's better. Yeah. Really su- uh, and by the way, if you're wondering, Nintendo's Mario franchise has sold more copies than Grand Theft, but no single game comes close to the $6 billion. Game is Big Dummy, 844-999. Ola, who is our next contestant ready to play the game? Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Big Ola. 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 Justin, sober, not sober? Uh, not sober. <clears throat> All three contestants on Team Not Sober with a J name. We've had Jeff, we've had Jerry, now Justin. Men's room poll there, Justin. One hour locked in a room. You want to pick the snakes, the tarantulas, the bees, or one chimpanzee? Um, I'm going to have to say chimpanzee because I think that maybe I have the best chance of survival. Here's um, the difference, man. Like The snakes aren't actively going to attack you for the most part. The tarantulas are just scary. The bees probably won't actively attack you unless you do something. But the chimpanzee, like, I just don't know, man. It's up to him. You know what I mean? Like, the bees might get busy doing something else. Doesn't matter. Tarantulas won't really attack you, but they're just gross looking. The snakes, they want to be left alone. But the chimpanzee, man. The chimps went in on uh, Twitter. I people, think that people is, want to get in that, that room is crazy with the chimp. To me. I think people just want to hang out with the chimp for an hour and find out what the hell's going on. I think that's a bad I idea. don't know. I think that... The others, I think that they might recognize that they're out of their natural environment and be more likely to be aggressive and on edge. I think that with the chimpanzee, I can maybe show it that I am not aggressive or a threat to it, and it just might leave me alone at best or at worst just maybe slap me around a bit for an hour, <laughs> but not really give me so like, you're like, like, you're like your last uh, date you were on. He got bit slapped <laughs> by a chimpanzee. I ain't seen nothing like it. Yeah. All right, here's, here's your question. The tallest building in what state is only an 11-story apartment building that's only 124 feet tall? In this entire state, this is the tallest building. What state? New York? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You think the tallest the building home of New York City. in New York is 11 stories tall, Justin? No. Okay. We're, we're not gonna, we'll give you a mulligan. Like that was such a bad answer. Yeah. We're actually so we're look, you're looking for the state where the eleven floors is the tallest building in the entire state. So, like you look at Chicago and you go, "Wow, it can't be Illinois." That sure is a big city, right? 
You go to Miami and you go, oh my goodness, Florida's got to be taken out of the equation. It can't be most well, damn states. Yeah, they could go to Texas with Houston and Dallas. You go, man, I, surely there's a building bigger than 11 a floor. So what state do you think would not have a building 11 stories tall? Uh, that's a hard one. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, Montana maybe? I'm going to go Wyoming. That's a reasonable guess. Wyoming is a great guess, but it's an incorrect guess. North Dakota? Vermont. Ah, Vermont. Yeah, believe it or not. I would have right, guessed right, Wyoming right. instantly. But. Okay. Right. Huh. Can we find out what the tallest building is in Wyoming? I'm going to guess it's 15 Probably stories. in Cheyenne, I guess. I'm, I'm just guessing like a 15-story holiday. They call it a high-rise. Like yeah. Well, sure. It's a skyscraper. All right, your next question. Okay. Some of the raptor sound effects in Jurassic Park were actually created from audio samples of what animal having sex? Oh, man. Pigs? No. Pigs? Believe it or not, we play it on this very program. <laughs> turtles! <laughs> turtles! <laughs> turtles! So now I want you to know, when you picture those turtles having sex with that sound, just know that's also an angry raptor. I have the, oh, uh, the right. tallest building in Wyoming for you. Ah, how tall is that? It is 100, and, is, if I'm right, 148 feet tall. So that's about, what, 13, 14 stories, somewhere around Sounds there? Sounds about right. And it is the Wyoming Financial Center. Oh, it mm, is. For home that. finance and health. <laughs> All right. All right. Jingle Bells was originally written for what holiday? Jingle Bells, Batman Smash, Robin, Lady and Egg. I know this. What? I know this. What holiday? Just, just, just think the way that uh, time works there. It's got to be that. Think about when you could possibly, in theory, be on a sled in the snow. Actually, in, during, it was written by the Tin Man for Dorothy and was hitting on it. Oh. So it's, it's got to be a snowy holiday. That's the way I'm thinking on this one. So the snow has to be on the ground. has to be a major holiday. There's only one other option. I know. Is the, is the hook that it's not Christmas? Because I feel like yeah, it's, not Christmas. it's not Christmas. I'm glad you pieced and, that and, much and we're not And we're not going to count New Year's because that, that's all about drinking. Yeah, New Year's if you want. All right. Um, oh, I think, uh, how about Yule? <laughs> Yule? <laughs> the popular no. holiday. I, I'm going to guess Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, it is Thanksgiving. Huh. Uh -huh. Yes, I mean, uh, you've got to be dashing through the snow. I mean, and when you, can't, you can't do that during Easter. Right, Over the hills, hills we go. You might be able to. You never know. <laughs> Eating right, curds and whey. I am not impressed with this display of knowledge. Question four. True or False. When Mr. Potato Head first came out, back in 1952, it was just the body parts on sharp spikes. But you had to provide your own potato. False. That was true, my friend. They did not introduce well, the plastic body for Mr. Potato Head I would still, until the 1970s. I would still buy that. No, we would, but would you buy this for your kids? I would just buy the pieces. <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? You walk in my kitchen, there's Mr. Potato Head. He's a real potato on the counter. Every party I have, you're going to see Mr. Potato Head. People are going to dress him up, change him up, put a mustache on As him. an adult. Yeah. I but imagine just giving your little kid, here's some sharp-ass objects, ah, well. stabbing at a potato and make it look funny. Yeah. All right, multiple choice. What beer gets the worst overall rating on planet Earth? Miller Lite, Bud Light, or Natural Light? Um, Bud Light. <laughs> is it Natural Light? Natural Light. Oh, you're kidding me. It gets the worst I overall love, beer rating. Uh, I, 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 I disagree. I, I, I agree with you, but to be honest with you, I haven't had it in years. Natural <laughs> Ice, by the way, is second <laughs> worst. Ooh, natural yeah. Ice. Mm -hmm. Exclusively in that 24-ounce can. I don't know why I'm going to ask you this question, but the 100 tallest mountains in the world are all located... In five countries on what continent? You got this. You think? North America. God. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, see, man, I should have put a dollar bet on it. Asia, right? Asia. <laughs> Justin, are you, just, are you just joking around with us? <laughs> Why does everyone no, find no, us so I'm not hard? that good with geography and okay. questions. Or right. anything. Or I'm not good with questions. Yeah, questions. Questions <laughs> in general. I don't do interrogative. Brutal. If it makes you feel better, you're fine with questions. You're bad with answers, though. Here's your question. There's about 100,000 payphones left in the entire United States. One-fifth of them 
are located in one city. What is that city? A lot of people would live there to justify having one is this fifth. In, is this in America? You said United in the United States. States United yes. States. United States. Big city in the United States. Mm. I know this is geography again. It's going to be a guessing again. So let's go with New York City. Oh, yeah! There we go. yeah! Logic wins. There it is, Finally, man. boom. Ha-ha. Hold your head up high and then, and then put it down for, uh, real quick. All right. Oh, by the way, listen, sorry, everyone. I don't have the full list of the worst rated beers. I appreciate you saying Keystone Ice has to make that list. I don't know. But that's around the world. So it wouldn't have to be available around planet Earth. Oh, like natural. Yeah. Natural light is just rated the worst. Hmm. That's a feather in your cap. Natural light. Okay. And then right. followed by natural ice. Apparently the natural folks are doing too. As far as our men's room uh, poll, uh, one hour uh, locked in a room full of snakes, tarantulas, bees, or one chimpanzee. We get this email from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. Guys, I'm a zoologist, and I work with primates and happen to breed snakes at home as a hobby. These people are nuts. A chimpanzee would literally rip your face off if you are locked in a room with it. Thrill is absolutely right. <laughs> I'm trying to help you people. The snakes and bees and tarantulas will all leave you alone unless you provoke them. If the chimp is in a bad mood, you're dead. An adult male (laughs) chimp is as strong as two to four men. Thanks, everybody. That from Chad. And as far as our men's room poll is concerned, yeah, you want to be in that room with a chimpanzee? Uh, Followed by a a tie with bees and tarantulas for second place and snakes coming up the rear. There you go on Big Dummy. Still to come, head chef in the house, Ted's Meat and Potatoes, has the eight mistakes that you make grilling burgers. And we've got your emails coming up for the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Welcome back to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Head chef on the way, Ted's Meat and Potatoes, has the eight mistakes you make uh, grilling burgers. First time for a few emails from the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You've got Guys, my son Gavin is celebrating his eighth trip around the sun. He absolutely loves the men's room. How about giving him a suck up, cu- suck it up, suck it up cupcake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ, and some <laughs> dirty suck up cupcake. <laughs> and from Danny, Mark, Maddie, Sissy, Ash, and Bubba. So suck it up, cupcake. Read those names again. Daddy, Mark, Maddie, Sissy, Ash, and Bubba. Yeah, the Beverly Hillbillies love their family. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> Guys, so today is my son's 15th birthday. When I asked him what he wanted for his birthday, the first thing he said was a shout-out on the men's room. Now, when I asked him what specific sound effects he wanted to accompany said shout-out, he looked at me in a uh, quizzical manner. I ran through the list. Turtle sex, owl hitting the window, your penis is too small. Lastly, bong rips. At that point, his eyes lit up. So, yeah, give him a big old bong hit. <laughs> uh, thanks in advance. That from Kenda. <laughs> Look up. Guys, it's Sewer Terry. Can you wish my favorite son, Cody, a, a happy 24th Sewer. birthday with maybe a wedding puke and a shotgun get? Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And it? Get! Get! Guys, today is my brother Peter's birthday. Can you give him a couple of dirty Germans to celebrate his big day? Thanks, guys. Love you. That from Mandy. Yeah, I want to plug your blowhole with my skin cord. Yeah, Peter, I'm going to come by. come by and play with your cotton tail. <laughs> Bitches, today's my buddy Austin's 25th trip around the sun. Could you throw uh, some turtle sex in with Ted's bah, explosion sound effect from TV time with Ted in the middle? Thanks, guys, and rock on. That from Nathan. <laughs> Guys, today's my coworker Sarah's 30th. Listen uh, every day at the Salmon Hatchery. Uh, can you please have a little turtle wax with maybe a barbershop fish sandwich in the uh, at the backside? Uh, thanks, guys. That would uh, make her day. That's from Jesse the Bob. You know what I mean. After that. So I think that's what she meant. Not in the backside. Is it too early for a fish sandwich? A cheese and tartar on the side. A smell of fish sandwich. Maybe some dill relish in the morning. At noon. At noon. And at night. And at night. 
Oh, and can you please give my lovely lady Melissa a pronounced muskrat a birthday shout out? She'd love to hear those dirty Germans tell her what they would do to her. I love the sh- uh, show, guys. Thanks. That from Rody. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll be done. Your name, muskrat, will be two separate words. Yeah, muskrats generally like love. What I'm going to do to you is not love. But I want to try what tomorrow says your backside fish sandwich. Yeah, means the whole Baba Shop Quartet. <laughs> In the backside! Bitches today marks my sister Alexi's 31st birthday. She's a total badass, and I couldn't love her more. How about the dirty Germans talking about working in a hospital? Thanks, guys. That from Michael. Yeah, I was at hospital earlier this morning, but instead of man poking around my butt, I poke around yours. Hands free. Lexi, such a sexy name. I have a feeling by the time we're done, the only thing that'll be blue are your pants. Hello, guys. My fiance share a birthday today. He turns 38. I am 30. We are daily listeners. How about giving us a little turtle wax with an owl hitting the window or uh, your penis is too small of the paws? Uh, that would be great. Thanks, guys. That from Amanda and Jesse. <laughs> And guys, I'd like to uh, give a birthday shout-out to my husband, Brian, a badass Bering Sea fisherman engineer. He'll be listening on the drive home today from the shipyard. And I would love it if you guys would give him a birthday shout-out in the form of the Dirty Germans. Thanks for the daily entertainment. Happy 46th birthday there, Chief. That from Christy. Yeah, you are working at the shipyards. I'd like to pull my big love boat into your port. Yeah, and I know one thing he's very good at, because he doesn't mind the smell of fish. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitches. Y'all's the Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, shrine of All right, time for a couple extras here real quick. Guys, uh, what did you use in place of toilet paper? I ran a half marathon one time where I had to go right in the middle of the race. I ran 10 miles uh, of the race before I just could not hold it anymore. I ran into the woods to relieve myself and ended up falling into my own crap. And I had to use my shirt to wipe my hand and my backside. I finished the race in the top 10 without a shirt. Everyone thought it was because it was hot. And that's why I didn't have a shirt on. That from John. You know what's funny? I read that as everybody thought it was hot. Like oh, he was because he's a runner, so like, he's in no, really oh, good shape. Oh, like, oh, could right. be that too. Just he finished, pop my top. He finished tenth in the race. No, I wiped my ass on my shirt. Guys was hunting right. in uh, West Virginia uh, about four hours in. Uh, saw a nice doe, took a shot, got her. While I was getting deer, had to go real bad. Took one right beside her. Had nothing to wipe it on, so I, I cut some deer, hide and wipe with that. Cleanest wipe ever. That from Josh. That is some Davy Crockett S right there. Guys, I had uh, pulled a muscle in my wiping hand after unsuccessfully <laughs> teaching myself how to go north paw. My neighbor's dog showed me the way. I learned to do the carpet skirt, scoot on beach towels. Ah. That from Scott Tay. Damn, man. Damn, man. I mean, it, that's how. These he, are the emails we get. Jeez. I, yeah. <laughs> Motorcycle day trip, eastern Oregon, ain't something bad, middle of nowhere, this is going to happen. No rest areas, no gas stations, no nothing. Full throttle, gripping the handlebars, full tilt, squeezing the butt cheeks as tight as possible, sweat running down my face, finally couldn't hold it, hit the kill switch, had the kickstand down before I quit rolling while it cut loose as I leapt over the guardrail. Feet went out from under me on the landing, landed in the sitting position, I had a huge mess in my pants. Long story short... <laughs> Only thing I could find was one dirty rag in my tool bag. Had to ride home with no gloves, no socks, no underwear. Needless to say, I never leave home with my bike without toilet paper in my saddle bags. That from uh, Meyer. And uh, uh, one more. Uh, guys, I grew up in Baltimore. My parents didn't really have a whole lot of money. We would run out of toilet paper often. So when my dad got off work, my mom would make him go get napkins from the Wawa. Where uh. she really, really, well, we were broke, but she really liked coffee. So even during the worst financial times, my mom always had to leave her damn coffee. Uh, let's just say that when Dad was at work and we didn't have anything else, you better believe I used her precious paper coffee filters sure. to also handle my business. She never understood why we would run out of them so quickly. I'm 33 now, and although it's just my guy and I, we live in a small apartment in Huntington Beach, California. I always have a massive 24-pack of two-ply double rolls on hand. 
I wouldn't admit that to a lot of people, but I just had to ride in. <laughs> uh, Ted just went to Chicago, had killer deep dish for you. One day when we'll hit up uh, a Mariner game. Beer's on us. I oh. love you guys. Rock on. That from Jessica in Orange County, California. All right, coming up on the program, the return of No Way, Sherlock, but first... Time to open wide and sample Ted's meat and potatoes. Now, here's your host, head chef of the men's room, the Ted Nougat. Whoa! Oh. Look out. <laughs> there they are. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. I won't lie, the head chef is not in a good mood today. Why is that? The head chef is pissed. I'm pissed that I have to even tell you people about this stuff. Ooh. Today we're to go over eight mistakes that all you people are making when you're grilling your burgers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, So are these things that you've heard before? Are these things that... Uh, is this all new information that's going to blow everyone's mind? Negative. These burgers going to be as good as your buddy's burger? Do they... Do they do no, anything? nothing is. Okay, all right. James is the god. Okay, all right. I mean, he, I'm sorry. It, Thrill will agree. Yeah. It is he hands is. down <laughs> this guy. the best uh, burger okay. I've ever had in my life. Don't oh. put condiments on it. It might be made of people. What, what do you think it is? I tried have, it. What do you think? I have absolutely no idea. I heard about this thing, and I'm like, I, I believe they're good. How good can they be? So I'm at a tailgate with Ted. I think I got two, maybe. I don't know, but... I immediately walked to the table to put on ketchup and mustard, which is my chosen condiments on a burger. And James, also, before you get to the condiment part, it's a big burger, mm -hmm. and it's there's pink inside. Back right. in the day, I was not a big, but he's just like, trust me. Okay. So now, but he has me the burger, and he says, man, and like James steps in front of me. He's like, man, seriously, don't put any condiments on it. Now, keep in mind, I have not tried the burger, so I'm like, James, I, hear, I think he's half joking. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, I've heard they're good. I get it. Relax. And he's like, man, I'm being dead serious. He said, just do me a favor and just take a bite and tell me if you still need ketchup and mustard. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. He says, yeah. I took a bite of this burger. I looked my man in the eye and said, I don't even want ketchup or mustard. Huh. Not. And you I could not taste anything. You cooked. You could not taste any seasonings. Nothing know. in there at all. Dude, I don't know. I told right. you. It's made of okay. people or some extinct animal. I don't okay. know. All but right. his burgers are freaking tremendous. Next, every time he comes out to visit, in a shocker, he sleeps on my couch. But next time he does, <laughs> you're going to make the burgers? I go make them, but look, I told him, I said, hey, he has this couch make. has to start count. You, you got to pay me. Okay, but look. So pay me in burgers. He's going to have what? Well, he's going to have the ingredients somewhere in your apartment. So we should be able to go over and figure it out. I don't think out. you can watch him, though. Do you think no. he's No. He he's shows not, up he, with the patties. Prepared. That's the thing. He'll prepare the patties before he well, shows he's gotta up. He's got to prepare them at Ted's. He will, but he'll do it while I'm at work. Mm -hmm. you got to follow him in the grocery store and write down everything he buys. Get a webcam. That way we can get him. Get a webcam. I'm yeah. not inviting you. We're going to steal the formula. on his butt all day. <laughs> What's, in What's in here? What's in here? What's in here? These are eight mistakes you make grilling burgers. Eight. Number eight. Relying on pre-made patties. Pre-made patties, easy. You could pick them up. Look, sure. I'm not going to lie. It's you know, not like say, that. What's your brand that you like? Oh, Bubba you like. Burgers. Bubba Burgers. That's right. Now, as far as a pre-made patty, <laughs> pre-made patties. <laughs> pre-made like patties. Hype man. Pre-made patty. pre patties. <laughs> I need an air horn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, pre-made patties. Those are kind of coming in a stack. Like it looks like a looks like a you know like yeah like the Bubba Burgers. I will swear by them as sure. far as a pre made patty goes. <laughs> but I mean it is they're kind of pre made patty. They're a little they're a little pricier. Oh, okay, so pricey pre made pre -made patty. Pricey pre made patty, mate. Okay. Uh, so look, the head chef has done it too, man. Like everybody gets them, it's easier. But they're just saying, hey, if you want to make a good hamburger at home, let let's leave the frozen patties in the frozen food section. Uh -huh. Seven number seven. This happens to Mike all the time, but grabbing the wrong pack of meat. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it happens to Mike all the time? What do you mean he, he grabs the wrong meat? <laughs> just trying to piss him off. Basically, here's the deal. <laughs> People eat jer a look on his face. jerky burgers, <laughs> yeah. black bean burgers, whatever. Sure. But those burgers <laughs> will dry out often. Uh, and also, when you're making a, a burger, like you know, it might seem fancy to get like ground, uh, ground sirloin, right? No, you want a little fat in there. Thank you, Miles. Yes. Right. You yeah, need you to have fat. some fat in there. It's going to be juicy or this and that. Uh, you know, basically, you can get like an 85 to 15. So that means 15% fat. That's still going to be pretty dry. You want 70, 30. Yeah, I would agree with that. You right. are 50, and not 50, your home boy. You can throw that on the grill, but, but remember, all that grease drips down yeah. in the grill. If you make a pan hamburger one night, all that grease stays in there. 
That's a different Cooking yeah. it on the skillet. Oh, oh man, yeah. Your house you, stinks. You, yeah, I mean, it's terrible. Hey, you forget that that would be a good hamburger, but with all that fat in there, kind of caramelizing everything and crisping everything up, you're like, this is unbelievable. Why do I do this all the time? And then you go upstairs and your clothes smell like crap. And your heart rate it increases is. to yeah, 180 exactly. beats yeah, a minute. Yeah, but ground beef, 70 30. You're going to get a super juicy, uh, indulgent. <laughs> I didn't say that right. <laughs> I was spelled. I N D U L gent. Indulgent. <laughs> Indulgent. Indulgent. Are you giving out a phone number? We're number, number five. Number, five. <laughs> we're number five on these tips of burgers. Uh, no, we're going to number three. Number three, all the way to number three. Three, number three. Overhandling your meat. <laughs> it's another mic problem. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, that's been a Ted problem. Can't find the meat. Takes the wrong meat. Overhandles it. I'm not overhandling like Tristan the hell Thompson. Out of it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Tristan, right, a lot of people handling this meat. Uh, basically, everybody loves to add seasoning, spices, whatever, right? Like, that's how you make your homemade yeah. burger. Uh, quick quick little tip from the kitchen. If you just buy some ground beef and throw in some uh, Lipton's onion soup, people will be blown away at your burger. Okay. Seriously. Yeah. And it helps stretch it out. I like people. So what's your secret ingredient? No matter what it is I've made, it can be pasta burger, I always say semen. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> oh, that's just <laughs> salty. That's my blanket answer. Hey, man, what do you do different? Ah, it's the semen. Umami. <laughs> yeah, right. You could add in garlic powder, <laughs> chopped onions. Basically, they're saying you don't have to, like, you, it's not making a meatball. Right. Let's not go crazy with yeah, this yeah, meat. That's, that's right. exactly it's a right. burger. You just kind of be light, but uh, still kind of be firm with it. You yeah, exactly. You don't want they, to overpack it. They even say you could press it down <laughs> or use uh, a couple forks to make it. <laughs> what the hell's going on? I could go <laughs> fork right. every morning. Two, number two. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going the other way. Oh, we're going the other way. See, I started at number eight, and then you got confused. Oh, I said we're number oh, five or six, and then you changed show it. This is a well Let's go five. Let's go five. five. Number five. <laughs> we don't know what to write. We're trying to get to tip four. Oh, you want four? All right, we'll go to four, then. Let's go four. Four. Number four. Uh, we didn't get syndicated for nothing. <laughs> 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 Stop using easy tricks to make perfect patties. What's an? Oh, you mean like the Tupperware the things patty. where you pack it up and you and it's? Uh, yeah, I know exactly. They have a hamburger shaper former thing that you it's can make. A hamburger. Yeah, but they really do. I understand why you have a gingerbread man well, or a this cookie is, cutter. It's, it's, it's like a, a patty maker. It's this, a circle man. This is also just talking about uh, like like again handling too much and right. then also sometimes you know you'll you'll push <clears throat> press the patty. <laughs> Press the precious patty. <laughs> and then you got uh, red meat stuck on your hands, right? right? So basically, <laughs> you don't want to get meat fingers. <laughs> red meat, huh? Yeah, just... Well, pinky, pink, pinkish red meat. Basically, just dampen your hands with water. Oh. This will prevent the meat from clinging <laughs> mm-hmm. to, sh- to yeah. your fingers. I'll give you one more tip that I always do a little bit. You just put a little canola oil or something on the outside of your hamburgers. Mm-hmm. Instead of having to oil the grill down every time, you can do that if you want, but it's, uh, it kind of caramelizes as well. Huh? Just put a little, little oil on the outside of it and then flip it over and just kind of, you know, lightly coat it. Number five? Number five. <laughs> five. five! Number five! Making patties too petite. Do not have oh, petite small. patties. Too yeah, small? man. Yeah, because it'll dry out. Well, it's going to shrink on the grill anyhow. Mm-hmm. So look at the size of your bun, right? Make the patty a little bit bigger than that. So then when you grill it, it'll be okay. perfect size for your buns. Sometimes they say <laughs> press down in the middle, too. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What number are we on now? Six? Six. Six. Okay, we'll move it on. Up. Six. Number six. Not letting your grill heat up. Yes. Yeah, don't throw it on too early. God. Right. It, that's if one it's of a those gas things. grill, it's a little bit easier. Sure. Charcoal grills. 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 <laughs> don't get hot fast. Charcoal. It's a little bit different. Yeah, and if you want to, remember, you want to you heat this at like a uh, medium heat. You want to cook it at a medium heat. So you can always just uh, put your hands over the your charcoals, hold them for four or five seconds, or as uh, you know, if you're from the 20 south, twenty seconds if you're tough. Right. Well, right. Yeah, you can also do indirect too. You can just flash them real quick and put them on the side and throw them back in and let them go. That hold way. your hand there till you could say yeah. a couple Mississippis. Yeah. Okay. Then you know you're at the right heat. One Mississippi. Ah! <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Number seven. Seven. Number seven. You see this on TV all the time, and people love it. But stop pressing the patties. Do not press the precious patties. Oh, you yeah. know, don't pack them down too tight. Yeah. When well, you're cooking them, the no, oh, 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 yeah. Don't them do when that. they're on the grill you're and they're squeezing all the them. juice out. And they go, I love that sizzle. It's like, yeah, that's the flavor cooking. Away. Right, exactly. That's right. Bye-bye. As the flame that's goes That's the sound of flavor. As the flame goes up, the taste goes down. Mm hmm. That's true. When you hear that sizzle, that's a cry for help from your taste buds. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then the last thing you're doing wrong. Eight. Number exactly eight. where we started. Number eight. Stop testing for doneness on a timer or by your eye. Dude, just 
hope. The yeah, you should be able to figure. Or that use out. a hope. thermometer. All right, it's not that they're not that expensive. You can get them pretty cheap, and you don't you know use the one the you end. use on your kids. Use yeah. the rectal one. And like anything else, the more you use your grill, the more you make hamburgers, you, you'll figure it out pretty quick. It, it doesn't take long. A lot. Everybody figures it out. Beef, quick. pork, and lamb should all be around one sixty. If you're cooking chicken or turkey burgers, you got to get up to one sixty five. Okay. Yeah. So that's a uh, you know that's some things people do, and people are always going to overcook their. Uh, and eh, their burgers a little bit at home. Mm-hmm. I it seems so. that way. All right. You know, there's a lot of combinations people like in food, mm-hmm. but some of them aren't that great to go with. So when you think grilled cheese, what do you get with it? Tomato, Tomato soup. soup, right? Yeah. Well, stop doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn. Wow. That is just... It's... Told you. Chef is not happy, man. All right. Hey, yeah, you don't well, want to know. Well, it's stable, though. You can dip the uh, delicious sandwich Well, the cheese the and the ass in the soup are hard to digest at the same time, so you can end up with a tummy ache. <laughs> Guess what, man? <laughs> I'm eating for the joy of eating. I'll deal with the consequences later. You know what I mean? You can have fire poops, runny poop. Like, we get it. Your stomach hurts. I'll be hurt. bragging about pooping, dog. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Sorry, Miles. I'm struggling. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm struggling. I mean, do, uh... So constipated. <laughs> Another one is chips and salsa. He has a holiday What's wrong weekend. What's that? Oh, because it ruins the meal. They're you just saying you're going to eat a ton of corn chips. Yes, you are. It ruins the meal. Small amount of vegetables. <laughs> salsa is in his filling of guacamole. So basically they're saying, hey, get guac with yeah, the Yeah, definitely get the guac. Yeah, and you know who's perpetrating this? <laughs> who's perpetrating this? <laughs> it's the restaurants. Of course they want you to buy the guac because that costs extra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scam. It is, man. God damn it. And then last on the list, uh, fruit as a dessert after meal. There's, a, You know what? Just get I cake. Say, I would say it's cheese. Dessert. I would say <laughs> cheese the same way. Just get cake. You know, I like cheese. Oh, yeah. Then, Miles, you're going to hate this one. What? And I don't know why they even put this on there. Sausage and biscuits. No kidding. Obviously not the healthiest breakfast. Right. Yeah, biscuits and gravy. Are you kidding me? No kidding. Yeah. Whoa. Mind blown. Great segue. <laughs> Golly. All right, we're going to drink a toast coming up. The return of No as Sherlock is next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Coming up, we'll drink a toast. The child of the day is moments away, but first, our own Steve the Thrill Hill combs the globe. Picks it. Looking for stories with headlines that scream. Well, no, sh- Sherlock. This one is fresh off the presses. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton, blast millionaire who took food stamps. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. No, sh- Sherlock. Jeez. Less than one in ten of us are in our childhood dream job. <laughs> no, sh- Sherlock. Did you say less than one in ten of us? Yeah, that still yeah. seems high. I'm not a fireman. Think about all the different jobs that exist and how many of those are anything you ever wanted to do forever. Astronaut? Yeah, right? Well, they're ridiculous. Singer? The problem with being a singer is that you have to be able to sing. Right. Like astronaut, you have to be within a certain height. You have to be smart. But, right. Stuff like that. But. Taylor Swift. Damn it. <laughs> Let's reverse that. <laughs> Taylor Swift sings about alcohol a lot more now. Really? Well, no, sh- Sherlock. Well, she's older. That's that's the trick right there, Miles. It turns out, after she turned 21, it more of sense. her songs involved alcohol. Mm-hmm. But we continue. <laughs> Russian spy poisoning. Yulia Skripal declines Russian embassy's help. No, sh- <laughs> Sherlock. Baby wipes don't cause food allergies. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? No, sh- Sherlock. And one more. Good-looking people are more likely to believe that life is fair. Oh, no, sh- <laughs> Sherlock. Thank you, Steve. All right, well, we made it to drink it time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. Awesome, yeah. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Three time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast an unidentified man in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Now, the man was described simply as being middle-aged, and that's all we know about him other than this quick story out of his life. Now, over the weekend, our honoree wandered up to a Shell gas station. He didn't need gas. He wandered up to the Shell station because he needed help. Now, it should be noted that he was naked when he approached the Shell station, but he did not need help finding his clothes. Oh, no, he knew his clothes were still at home. He was in dire straits. He walked up to these strangers at the Shell station. He needed help. 
removing an unidentified sex toy from his ass. Oh, no. They're not saying what the sex toy oh, was, man. but they know its location. Oh. Things were so bad for him, he literally left his apartment naked. Found the, Why he went to a gas station instead of a hospital, mm. we do not know. As you would imagine, the people there were not thrilled about the idea of helping him extract this thing, but they did alert the cops. When the cops showed up, they, too, not as enthusiastic about helping him remove this. Instead, they called an ambulance where he was taken to a hospital. His Ooh. current condition is unknown. Ooh. But I got to think, man, things went really, 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 really wrong where I'm going to walk out of my house naked like, listen, man, this is embarrassing, but things are so bad, I can't get this thing out of my butt. There's more to this. There, there's got to be. Mm-hmm. There's got to be. God. Yeah, I think he got as far as he could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the streak. We pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! Let's get to Color 9 on the line right now for Profile This. 844-999-OLA. Ola, the shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.